In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute little doggy doorstop with his floppy ears and his corded tail with a knot in the end. It's very simple to make. It does have a weight in the bottom. That could be anything from um, a bag of sand or a little bag of rice. And it's easy to put in because it's got a zip straight across the base there as well. I've put a, a collar and a bell on him. You don't have to do that. You could tie a bow around the neck or, or leave that off if you wanted to. And I've embroidered eyes by putting little French knots either side of his face. But if you wanted to use buttons or toy eyes instead, that's entirely up to you. So let's have a look at the materials and then let's get sewing. So first of all, let's take the gusset. So I have the back piece, there's the chest piece, there's the neck and the nose. And these are all going to be sewn together so that they make a, a long straight line. So there we go. And I've pressed all of the pieces with the seams open as well. The next thing we're going to do is to sew the gusset around the body. So start with the nose section, which is the smallest piece in the middle here. And we're going to pin the centre of the seam to the point of the nose. And that's where we're going to start sewing. And I'll explain why as we go around. Now it's entirely up to you if you want to pin all the way around or if you're a little bit more confident so you may just want to go straight into sewing that but always start from that nose section now just be aware that on the curved sections you're going to have a little bit of give because as you cut fabric around a curve it has a bias cut which which adds stretch so do be careful to try not to stretch that fabric as you're sewing so take it easy on the curves Always start and stop with a needle in the down position. I'm going to go ahead and sew without pinning because it's going to be a little bit quicker to show you. So needle down and away we go. So again, line the edges up like so as you're sewing. And I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance slowly around the curve. Then I'm coming into the chin. Keep it nice and smooth. I'm just stopping in that seam and moving down the front here. So I'll sew straight down to the top of the foot. And stop and then curve around the toe. Again just hold those edge pieces together as you sew and take your time with it. So that's how we're looking. As you come into the V-shape here, just make a little snip up to the corner. Not through the stitches, but just up to the stitches. And do the same again, whereas you go on the inside of the neck. So the concave curves, basically, you're going to snip into. So again, from the nose, we'll do exactly the same and go around the back of the head. So I'm turning the fabric over this time, so I'm working from the pattern side and this is the best way to get the, the gusset to fit perfectly. So again be careful not to stretch around the head. Slowly bring those edges together. And again, it's very easy to start pulling at the fabric at this point, but don't. This is why I'm saying take your time. Just align the edges and so. So into the neck, 
and then around the back. So that's what we're looking like at the moment. And again, I've got a concave curve just in the back of the neck here. So just like before, I'm just going to snip into the seam allowance. This will help the seams to sit flatter. So you can see the dog starting to tape shape. What I need to do now is take the second half of the body. And again, starting from that nose, I'll sew this together in just the same way. So there's the main part of my little doggy door stop, all sewn together. Now let's make the base. Now you'll notice from your pattern pieces that I've actually cut the zip a little bit longer. And I tend to do that because as I'm sewing around um, the zip, it means I can move the slider out of the way so my stitches aren't going to go wobbly. So I'm not going to put the zipper foot on my sewing machine because you'll find if you have a, um, a computerized sewing machine, you can actually move the needle over to the left hand side. So on a lot of occasions, you don't even need to put your zipper foot on. So let's just sew straight down the centre of the tape. Just move that side out of the way without it coming off. And we go right down to the end. Like so. And then we'll sew the second half of the panel onto the opposite side of the zip tape. Again, right sides together. Just line up those edges of the fabric so they're the same on both sides. You can pin this if you wish. I don't tend to with zips, to be honest, because by the time you've lined everything up and then you've pinned it, and then you take all of your time taking the pins out as you're sewing, you could have had two zips in. If you want to make that really neat, you can top stitch along the edge of the fold. So I'll put the needle back over to the centre position. There we go. Oh, just jumped out. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes needles just decide they don't want to be threaded anymore. So, oh, I'm chucking you out. There we go. Try it again. And then along the second side. And that just keeps it neat. It's not the most important thing to do because this is on the bottom, so you're not really going to see it anyway, but it does give a nice finish to your work. Then I'm going to undo the zip a little bit, and I'm just going to sew across the ends of the zip just to hold those uh, two pieces together. Because when I sew this into the base of the um, the door stop, um, the zip needs to be open. So I don't want the zip to part as I'm sewing. There we are. Now I can trim off the end of the zip. Don't do this if you're using a metal zip. Ruin your scissors. And there's the base. So now to sew this in. Oh, now we need to put the tail on first, don't we? Um, so the tail is going to go on the open end of the zip and that's because, if I just show you this one, when the zip's closed, 
you don't want the little um, slider here showing at the front, it'll look a little bit odd. So we sew the tail onto the zip and make sure that the zip fastens at the bottom end of the door stop. So I'll just put a few stitches across the end of there. I've tied a knot in the end of the cord so it doesn't come undone. You could use a piece of string if you wish. And I'm just going to sew that across the end. Or a ribbon might look nice. And then we'll sew this in place. So again, make sure the tail's at the back so it's in the right place. Line up the corners. Now you may find, and I did put on your instructions if you read those, that the, the panel that you've just made is wider um, than the size that you actually need. It depends on the width of the zip that you're using and depends on the seam allowance that you're using as well. Um, so you may need to trim this back down a little bit, but mine seems to be absolutely fine. But that's quite normal, don't worry about that. If it's a little bit too large, just trim it, it's not a problem. Right, so again, if you wanted to pin, jolly good. You don't have to if you don't want to. Now, when you're sewing in the corners, what I want you to do is to line up the edges of the fabric, and I'll show you what I mean. So there's the corner of my square base, and that's the edge of the zip panel. Don't put the edge of the zip panel into the seam and start to sew from there. Overlap it slightly so that the edges of the fabric meet along this side here. And then you'll start sewing a quarter of an inch in. So let's fold that piece out of the way, overlap, and then we're going to start sewing. If I just put a pin in there, that'll make it clearer. Start sewing here. And that'll mean that the base all lines up and you get really nice, neat corners. And that's the way to sew in the base of a, a bag, if you've got a square base that you need to add as well. So I'm not going to pin again, just for speed's sake. But if you wanted to, uh, just to make sure that it's going to fit, then that's absolutely fine. When you come up to the next corner, you can feel the lump where the seam is, so stop there. Leave the needle down, pick the foot up, just move that so you can see it a bit better. And then push all of this fabric out of the way, and the tail, off you go. Turn your work around and just keep the edges lined up. Don't worry about what's going on here. It's the base that we're concerned about. So as long as whatever is going under your needle is straight and the edges are meeting, this is going to work absolutely fine. So over the zip in the tail, and back into the next corner, needle down, lift your work up, spin it around, tail out of the way, and so. Right, let's turn in the right side out and see how we're looking. There. Just push his feet out. There's a loose thread there, let's make him nice and tidy. And then we can stuff him. That actually takes quite quite a bit of toy filler because I like him to be stuffed nice and tightly. Because the more toy filler you push in here, the more kind of a shape you can make to his cheeks and his head. And it's important to have quite a lot over the um, over the neck as well, because that's the area that may wrinkle or it may go a little bit floppy. And the more filler you put in here, the smoother the seams are going to be as well. So just keep stuffing until you've got a nice plump puppy. Now 
Now it's at this point, if you're going to put a weight in the bottom, leave a little bit of a gap inside your stuffing and push the weight in there. And as I said earlier, that weight could be a little bag of rice, it could be maybe a, a pebble even, or a bag of sand, or just something that's quite heavy. If you're not, then close up the zip, like so. So he's got no ears and he's got no, no eyes at the moment, so let's get on with making up the ears. So take your ear pieces, now these could be the same colour fabric, they could be contrasting coloured fabric, that's entirely up to you. And we're going to sew this right sides together, but leave the top open. So again, nice and smooth around that curve. And back to the start. If you've got pinking shears, it may be an idea to just trim around the curve. If not, then just cut the fabric quite close to the curve seam. And again, that helps for the, um, the seam to sit flatter when you turn it the right side out, which I'm doing now. So that's a bit of a crinkly ear. So that needs ironing. If you wanted to sew around the edge to make the seam neat, again, that's absolutely fine. So you can take as much time as you like making these and add little details. A plique would look lovely. Um, maybe not on the ear, but um, on the sides or on the chest of the dog maybe, so you can really personalise it and make it, make it your own. I'm folding in the edges of the top of the fabric by about a quarter of an inch or so, it doesn't have to be exact, just to make that neat and then we'll give that one a press as well. And I've already made the other ear, so both ears are finished now. Pop that down and turn it off. There we go. Right, now these are going to be hand sewn onto the side of the head. So I'll take my needle and thread. And you do have the position markings on your pattern. So you can transfer those if you wish. And I'm simply going to fold the ear in half. Let's do it that way and literally sew to the side of the head. So I'm going to come up through the back of the ear to hide my knot and then do a tiny kind of over edge stitch, so into the head and then just catching at the fabric. Now these ears, if you have little ones around, are probably going to be the first things to be pulled off. So whenever I sew on anything like this, I'll sew by hand and I'll go over that a couple of times maybe just to make the seam really strong. I'll tie a really secure knot into the end and then what I like to do is to put a little drizzle of glue underneath the ear. So you can't see it but it's going over my stitches and it's going to hold the stitches in place and it's an extra little bit of security for the ear as well. So make sure that the ear on the other side of the face is in the same position so that's symmetrical and hand side that on in the same way. So now we're starting to look cute. So let's put the collar around the neck. So you can either add the little bell or you could just tie this into a bow. You might need a little bit more ribbon than on your instructions if you're going to do a bow. I'm going to put a little dob of glue onto the end of my ribbon because it's quicker than hand sewing it and I'm overlapping it underneath the ear so that's not in a place that's going to be conspicuous. 
and that's really strong fabric glue. And then the bell, I'm going to hand sew just under the front of the neck here. And I'll go through the body as well because then that'll help to hold the collar in place. So I'm just securing the end of the thread. I haven't forgotten to put the bell on. Here's my bell. You could make a little name tag actually, that would be quite cute. But your dog's got to have a name, hasn't it? You'll have to post below. Let me know what you think the dog's name should be. Or what your dog's name is. Mine's Bobbin, because I thought it was appropriate for the kind of work that I do. And she looks like a bob. She's very cute. So have you got any unusual dog names, maybe? Be lovely to hear. OK, my little dog's got the bell. So the only thing she's missing now are the eyes. And I'm going to use a navy embroidery thread for this one. And again, you've got your markings on the, um, on the pattern. What I like to do to hide the end of the knot is to go in at the cheek somewhere and then come out in the position of the eye. You can make a mark on there with an erasable ink pen if you wish. And then I'm going to pull the end of the thread inside the cheek so you can't see it. Then make my knot. So in and out, virtually on top of itself. So you're making a tiny stitch, but don't pull the thread through. And then take the end of the thread that's coming out of the fabric and wrap round one, two, three times. The more you wrap the thread around, the bigger the eye is going to be. And then I'm just going to hold on to the knot and pull the rest of the thread through until I have a lovely little French knot. Then go back in just at the side of where the eye is and come out directly opposite. So you might need quite a long needle for this one or squish the head together if that makes it easier. Just got a quarter around the ear. And then do the same on this side. So tiny stitch in and out. Whoop, come here. One, two, three. And pull the thread through. Now that's a secure knot on both sides. That's not going to come undone. I've got one eye a little bit bigger than the other one, so I'm going to just do another knot on top of there. Not quite what happened there. Whoop. You're a very slippery dog. Maybe I'll call this one slip. That's better. And again, I'm going to take the needle into the knot and bring it out somewhere else on the face. Pull it slightly, cut it off, and then the end disappears inside the head. So there he is, or she is, a little doggy doorstop finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you like my little doggy doorsteps, and I hope you enjoy making yours.